Johnny. Win some money, man. Rent got too expensive, had to leave LA. So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate. Playing poker every day. Going all in with these fish like I'm at an all you can eat buffet. We're up $6,500 in the last three sessions. It's time to enjoy ourselves for a few days. We leave Biloxi heading east and stop at the Florabama bar where they literally have bras hanging from the ceiling. It's made up of five bars and located right on the beach, something you should definitely experience once for yourself. Heading east, we stop in Pensacola where I heard there was a card room inside of a Greyhound track. We end up losing $40 in the 1-3 game but collected a $1 chip for the collection. Marcelo and I finally make it to Destin, Florida, home of the white sand beaches, and when the sun goes down, I do my best white girl TikTok impersonation and dance to some imaginary music. The sunset got even better, so I had to send the drone up. After three days in Florida, we start heading back to Houston. I quickly stopped by another Greyhound track called Ebro and ended up losing $136. Before hitting the card room, we catch a Houston Rockets game and if you're a fan of the team, I have to give it to you. Your collection of jerseys might be some of the coolest in the league. They were playing the Suns this night and even though the Rockets are trash, they provide other forms of entertainment that you can't take your eyes off of. Luckily, they were playing the Suns and Chris Paul had this sick in between the legs move that made SportsCenter that night. Marcelo, Mauricio, and I went nuts. The game's over, but we hear our name being shouted from a few rows down. No freaking way we get spotted by a vlog watcher named Luis. And what's even crazier is that I hadn't posted on any social media yet that I was here. Yo, so we're at the Houston Rocket game. I hear Wolf. I'm like, what the heck? Luis here. He shouted out my name. He's a vlog watcher. Super sick to run into a fan here at the Rockets game. They got blown out, but that made my day. Yo, we got killed, bro. Hey, next, year, next year, next year, bro. We'll be there next year. Yeah, if John Wall plays, maybe Bro, this guy is so cool, man. I like his videos. I watch videos all the time. Hey, shout out to all you guys watching. Shout out to Lewis. Thanks for making my day, bro. Shout out to you, bro. Yeah, thanks nice for watching you, the videos. Man. Devin Booker signs an autograph, and we're on the move through a rich neighborhood on our way to Johnny Chan's 88 Social Club, where we meet up with the high stakes pro himself. What's up, you guys? We're back with another another video here with the legend himself, Johnny Chan, at his own card room here in Houston. Thanks for having me out, Johnny. I appreciate it. What do you guys say to the vlog? Let's go, Johnny. We're going to win some money, man. We're going to win some money tonight? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, let's go. Easy money. Woo. Go get it. Kick some go. ass. Hey. We run into Andrew, who also has a vlog, and we sit down in the 1-3 game for $1,000. First hand of the night, I look down at Ace King from the big blind. Middle position raises it up to $20, and the action folds around to me. I'm going to come in for a 3-bet. I pop it up to $65. Action folds back around the middle position, who doesn't call my 3-bet. Instead, he elects to go for the 4-bet for a cool $200. Two Benjamins are on the table, and the action's back over to me. 5-bet shove. I don't really know if I like that move, so... So I decide to flat call and we're going heads up to the flop. Are we going to go all in on our first hand? I'm not sure, but the flop is pretty favorable. It comes a six deuce rainbow. I'm out of position to the opponent. I'm going to be checking 100% of the time here, and that's what I do when the action's on middle position. Interestingly enough, though, he decides not to go for the c-bet. He checks behind, and that brings the seven of hearts on the turn. At this point, I'm skeptical that he has any strong aces like ace, king, ace, queen. Most likely, he has something like jacks, queens, or kings. Didn't like the ace on the flop. Although I still think if he had one of those hands, he should go for the C-bet to bet his entire range there. Either way though, on the turn when it comes to 7 of hearts, I check it over to the opponent for a second time, expecting him to go for a bet now when I check to him two times. And sure enough, he does. He goes for the delayed C-bet for $200. Obviously, I'm never folding here, but could I be going for a raise? I think a raise just folds out all those hands like jacks through kings. We could call here on the turn and then lead out on the river, although that looks pretty strong as well. But I think just flat call 
calling this bet here makes the most amount of sense. In case he also was slow playing a hand like pocket aces, I put in the call and we're off to the river in an $800 pot, which comes with three of spades. Once again, a card that shouldn't really change too much. If I'm ahead on the turn, I'm ahead on the river. When the decision's on me, I don't immediately check it over to the opponent. I think if I check to him a large portion of the time, he's going to be checking it down and looking to get to a cheap showdown. For that reason, I'm thinking about going for an all-in bet here for around $600, making it look a little bit bluffy. The three of spades doesn't really change too much. I checked to him twice. My line is a little bit weird with ace king here. I also didn't five bet pre. So I decided to go for it here, all in for $600, looking to get a light call from ace queen, pocket kings, pocket queens, something of that nature. We don't get snapped off. That means that we're good. Ultimately though, he does find a call and I confidently turn over my ace king, hoping to take down this $2,000 pot but not when he turns over the exact same hand except the club variety. Very interesting way he played that hand, checking back the flop, but we're gonna chop up this 2K pot the first hand of the night in Houston. Second end of the night, we look down at King Queen from the small blind and the hijack pops it up to $25 over two limpers. Action's back onto me, I'm out of position, I have a decent hand, so I decide to go for the three bet to 80 bucks. The opponent puts in the call, he defends his raise and we're going heads up to the flop. Flop's a bad one for us, it comes 10-7-3 with two clubs. However, I do elect to go for a C bet here out of position for $50. I can still represent all the over pairs in my range. I'll have some ace 10, I'll have some ace high flush draws of the club variety. So I like my $50 bet here, but not when he decides to go for the $200 raise. Action's back onto me and I don't really think about it too long. Yeah, sure, he could be just raising here, expecting me not to have hit this board too hard with my entire range, but it's still 150 more dollars to me and I just have king high with pretty much no backdoor draws. So I muck my cards and we look down in the next hand and ace 10 of diamonds. $800 in our stack and Andrew's on the button. He puts in the straddle to six. Two calls to me and I decide to raise it up to $40. Looking to play big pots here in Houston. I heard there was a lot of action. I want to play some large pots with these players. Unfortunately though, everyone folds, which is strange. We're just going to take down that dead money. Real quickly, wanted to give a shout out to my buddy from college, Matt, who absolutely steamrolled the table here in Houston on a different night. Shout out to you, Matt. Good luck at the tables. Let's get back into the video. Ace 10 didn't work out too well for us there. We look down at Ace Jack of Diamonds this time from the button. There's one limp and I pop it up to $15. We're gonna get called in two spots by the big blind and the hijack going three ways to the flop. Flop comes 9, 6, 10 with one diamond. We have two overs, a backdoor straight draw, a backdoor flush draw, and both opponents check it over to me. I decide to check behind here as this board doesn't really connect too well with my pre-flop raising range. The turn gives us some outs. It comes the four of diamonds and the big blind checks it over to the hijack. He decides now to go for a bet nearly pot size for $50. I have two overs and I have the nut flush draw, so I put in two green chips, the other player folds and we're off to the river which pairs the board, it comes the four of clubs, not the best card, and now the hijack makes a strange bet for $25. Can I ever be good here with just ace high? I don't think so, I think it's likely the opponent is going for one last small street of value. I'm not going to give him one more green chip, I toss my cards into the muck and he takes down that $150 pot. We're stuck $265 so far on the session. What's up you guys, we're here with a fellow vlogger Andrew up, Bowden. He shouted me out here to this place, Johnny Chan's 88, so big shout out to him. If you guys aren't subbed to his channel already, I'll drop it down below. Go check it out. Super cool content. Really Appreciate cool guy. It. Anything to say to the vlog watchers, man? Um, If you haven't followed him like, and done all the things to his channel, follow it. Go watch all the videos. Wolfgang is putting out amazing content. Yeah. Hey, you heard the man. Yeah, nice yeah. to meet you Appreciate in person it. finally. Thank and yeah. yeah, go check out his content. It's super good. We're going to get back into the tables right now. We just switched. We're down like 300 right now, but this table looks 10 times better already, so... Let's go! Hey, I'm Johnny Chan and you should subscribe with Gang Poker Live! Yo! Switching tables, we look down at King at 9 of Hearts from the hijack. There's a few limps to me and I pop it up to $15. The button and the low jack both put in the call, so going three ways to the flop, which gives us a flush draw, comes ace 3-4 with two hearts. Low jack checks it to me, I'm in between two players, I start with a check, and the button checks behind, looking for a heart on the turn, comes the queen of clubs. 
Lojack checks to me for a second time, and now I'm gonna go for a delayed C bet. I bet out for $30. The button gets out of the way, but the Lojack puts in the call, so we're off to the river, which gives us some showdown value now with the King of Diamonds. When he checks it over to me, I decide to go for value instead of checking behind. This is pretty thin, but he might just have a queen and pay us off here. Not believing we rivered a king, I bet out for $30. Fortunately though, he finds a fold. Maybe it was likely he had two hearts in his hand. I really wish the river was a heart. Maybe we would have got stacks in there. Either way though, we're stuck 250 now on the session. Next hand, 700 in our stack. I look down at king, queen of spades from the hijack. Few limps to me and I pop it up to $21 and we get called by two middle position players. So we're going three ways to a flop, which comes king high. King six, seven, rainbow. First middle position leads out for $21. The second one gets out of the way. The action's on me. Do we go for a raise here? I think that has some merit, protecting against some draws and worse kings. But in the moment, I decide to stick in $21, looking to see what he does on the turn. The turn comes with three of clubs, bringing in the backdoor club draw, but not really anything we should be too worried about. And he leads out for $21 again. Since I didn't raise on the flop, this is a safe turn card. I need to go for value now and protect against hands like 8-9. So I raise it up to $75 and the opponent puts in the call. The hand seems pretty good. We're off to the river, which comes the four of diamonds. Puts a four liner to a straight, although I don't really expect him to have a five in his range, but I don't really think I'm going to get another street of value against a worse king. So when he checks to me, I decide to check behind. The opponent turns over 8-10 of clubs for the gutter and the flush draw on the turn. I turn over my king queen. That's good enough for $260 coming into my chip stack. We're finally heading in the right direction. Wow. Welcome, bro. <laughs> After witnessing quad kings, we're hoping to summon a little run good in this next hand. We look down at king jack of hearts from the under the gun. $6 straddles on and there's two callers, so I pop it up to $25. Is that going to get one or two callers? No way. It gets five callers here in Houston. Book your flight right now. The action is insane. We're off six ways to a flop. Flop's pretty good for us. We have two overs, backdoor straight draw, and the front door heart flush draw, 10-8-3 with two hearts. The action checks over to the button who goes for a $30 bet, and I'm the only person who puts in the call out of the five other players. Looking for a heart, a king, jack, nine, queen, something on the turn dealer. Please give it to us. Turn isn't exactly what we hoped for. It comes a red card, but it's a deuce of diamonds. I check with my middle finger, maybe a little sign to the dealer. JK, never mean to them. Action's on the button, and he bets out for a hundred dollars price of poker just went up here but i think we still have enough equity here and we're deep enough to make this call the river is not a good card again it comes a seven of clubs we don't end up getting there and we're left with just king high can i lead out here as a bluff no i don't really think that makes too much sense i think it's best just to check and give up hoping he goes to a showdown and somehow we win with king high that's not what's going to happen here he bets out for 150 dollars no bueno for me my king jack goes down in flames losing a 350 dollar pot and now the hand of the night we're in the small blind i look down at ace deuce of diamonds few limps to me so i pop it up to 20 dollars we want to play a large pot here flush over flush somebody andrew on my left pops it up to 70 dollars and the action's back onto me sure this is probably just a fold but blind versus blind against another vlogger. I'll probably end up making this video. Good cross promotion here. I toss in the $50 and we're off to the flop. Flop's decent for us. We flop top pair, ace, queen, six with two spades. Action's on me and I'm gonna check my range over to Andrew. He decides not to check behind and instead goes for a one third pot size bet for $50. Obviously never folding here when we flop a pair of aces and we're off to the turn. 250 in the pot and the turn comes the eight of diamonds. I start with a check again, looking to see what Andrew decides to do. He now sizes up to $180, which is a little bit strange. If we put this hand into the solver here on the turn, we can see exactly what hands it recommends him betting here on the turn with. As you can
you can see, he's betting 66% of his range. He's betting all of his aces. He's betting his queens. He's also betting some straight and flush draws. Obviously, there's a spade draw out there. So once we plug in that he goes for that big bet there on the turn, we can see what we're supposed to do with our range. Side note, it didn't expect us to raise with ace do suited and then call off a three bet against the big blind. Let's just pretend that we have ace four suited in this hand for all intensive purposes. As you can see, all the ace four suiteds are 100% of the time going to be calling here. Pretty much all the aces are doing so. So knowing that's what the solver prefers, let's jump back into the hand and see what I do in real time against Andrew. Luckily for me, I make the right decision here and stick in the call for 180. Not going to get swayed by his big bet there on the turn. $600 in the pot and the river comes the six of hearts. When he sizes up on the turn, never leading out into him here on the river, that just wouldn't make any sense. I check it over to Andrew and he rips it all in for $375. I expect he'd be doing this with his missed straight draws, his missed flush draws. He'd also be doing this with queens, maybe ace king, ace queen. Let's jump back into the solver one more time. When we plug the six of hearts on the river and check it over to him, this is what Andrew's range is going to look like. He's betting around 68% of the time and checking behind 32%. We tell the solver that he goes for the big bet there on the river and we look at our range now and all of the aces are supposed to be calling for the most part. We're getting rid of all those hands in the middle like queen jack suited through eight seven suited but if we click on ace four suited which is what we're pretending we have here we're calling 100% of the time. That's interesting to note here and let's pop back into the hand. As you can see I'm in the tank for a while here. It just doesn't really make too much sense. I'm shuffling some chips and really thinking about my decision. I probably tank for around a minute to two minutes before for ultimately checking my whole cards once again, making sure I do in fact have the ace and sliding my remaining chips into the middle. Unfortunately for us though, Andrew turns over one of those hands that has us crushed. He has a boat, pocket queens, and he's going to take down that $1,400 pot. And I guess we're getting our taste of our own medicine. He pulls out the camera and films us. Never really knew how that felt. Ooh, a little brutal session for the boys. Not for this one and not for that one. So two out of three, we're, we'll be the supported friend here. Andrew, as you guys know, stacked me in that hand. I just couldn't fold against him. Thought he was capable of bluffing, but now we know he's not bluffing the wolf. He, that's not happening. Marsh got into the game for how much, Marsh? 600 and we cashed out 984. So. Heck yeah. How'd you do? Uh, in for two, out for two, 770, so plus 770. Yeah. There we go, and we got into that game for 1,000 and ultimately cash out for a big goose egg. Here's how we're doing on the road trip totals. We'll cover up Andrew because we don't like him right now, but as you can see, we've been doing pretty good on the road trip. As always, like the video, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Good luck on the film. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.